Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris Effects, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you why the new BCC Plus lens flare effect might just be your new go to effect for all your lens flare needs. All right, so as you can see, we are an avid media composer. These are the shots that you saw in the introduction. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my footage partner, Artgrid. And you can download these clips plus thousands and thousands and thousands of others at artgrid.io. Now, the one thing that I always kind of like to jokingly say is that every shot requires color correction, whether you think it does or not. Now, what I've also started to say is that every shot needs a lens flare, whether you think it does or not. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that when I say that, I am sort of half jokingly saying that, but you know, I'm not talking about JJ Abrams in your face lens flares that jump out at you. What I'm talking about in a lot of cases is just very subtle enhancements to take great shots and make them even better. Let me give you an example here. This shot here originally didn't have the sun in it. And I thought that it would be cool since it was actually nighttime on this side of the planet to add the sun over here so that it looks like it's actually illuminating this side of the planet with a little bit of the chroma ring happening over here on the left. Now with the next shot, the sun was actually already there. And all I did was just step in and enhance this shot by adding in, again, a flare on top. Look, again, just another little enhancement. This is the way that this shot looked originally, which is how a projector might look. But in this case, I just wanted to again add another little layer of realism with that flare. And finally, with the UFO, I just wanted to add a little bit more mystery to it by adding that cool little blue flare in there. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that how I actually did this was a bit of a progression. What I did was I started out with this first shot and created the sun flare. Now, the sun flare is a flare that I use all the time. I am always using it to enhance any time the sun might show up in my shot so I could just add a subtle little lens flare in it to enhance the shot. So what I did was I took this version of the sun here and I altered it for this shot altered it again for this shot, and believe it or not, I even altered it one last time for this shot here. Now, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to drop in a flare and alter it for this shot here, and then we're going to take it and modify it for this UFO shot so you can see how we can go from one version of the sun, which is very obviously the sun, to something completely different, but it's all done just with a few clicks of the mouse. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to call up our effects palette. I'm going to head on in and type in lens flare. As you can see, it's already typed in. And we're going to skip over all the flares and come down to BCC plus lens flare. I'm going to take this effect, drag it, and drop it down onto our shot. Now, something that I do want to point out about this effect is that it is part of the BCC plus category of effects, the cinematography effects. And this is more or less a brand new effect into Continuum. Now, it's not a brand new effect that was developed by Boris. It actually came from digital film tools, but we're looking at it at its infancy stage, basically how it came over to Boris effects with some enhancements made to it. And what we're going to be able to do with this effect, plus all the other ones inside the plus category, is watch them develop over updates to have additional features added to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step into effects mode, my shortcut shift and Y. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it right down here at the top of the timeline. And you'll notice that we have some parameters in here. Now we don't have a ton of parameters, but we do have some parameters that we can get in and adjust. You'll see things like the scale, aspect, angle, uh, flicker, edge flare, and things like that. But what I need to do, first of all, is I need to actually get in and adjust this flare because you can see that the flare is happening all over her, right, basically right across our talent. And even if I adjust where the actual flare is going to, I really want to have it go across the screen, but I don't want to have it impeding on her in the shot at all. Remember, this is designed to be subtle. We want it to enhance the shot, not make it distracting. So how am I going to go about doing this? Well, presets are a good place to start. Let's scroll all the way back up to the top of the effect. I'm just going to delete the keyframe that was added in there. And I'm going to navigate right over here to the FX editor. Now, I love the FX editor, very, very similar to the FX browser. And you'll notice that we just have like literally a staggering amount of presets to get ourselves rolling with here on the left. All right. 
And you'll notice that with those presets, we have some parameters on the right. But let's pick a preset to start with. And what I'm going to do is just pick something that might look remotely like the sun. Uh, it doesn't even really matter. This one's not too bad right here. Circular 2. Now, again, Circular 2 has quite a lot of things happening with it. You got a lot of these circles in here that are, again, becoming distracting over her face. But don't worry. We'll get in and adjust these in a second. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so you got the flare. We can get in and we can make some adjustments. However, the adjustments look like, or the parameters themselves look like what we have access to when we hit apply and we have them here. Well, believe it or not, much like with a lot of the other effects inside a continuum, there's a lot going on under the hood here that you might not be aware of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the FX editor. And I'm now going to talk about Sapphire for a second. Now, you might be thinking, Kev, that's a little bit odd to start talking about Sapphire in a continuum tutorial. Well, the reason I want to talk about Sapphire is because there's one thing that I love, 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 love inside of Sapphire. Well, there's a few things that I love, but one thing that I love more than anything is the Flare Designer. And it's always something that I wish I had access to inside of Continuum. Well, believe it or not, I actually do have access to something very, very similar to Sapphire's Flare Editor inside of BCC Plus's Lens Flare Effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right over here to Flare where it says Edit Flare. And as soon as I click on that, you're now going to see that I have access to the Flare Editor where I can get in and build the type of Flare that I want to have. Now, what's very cool with it is it's very interactive. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm just going to navigate over here to the left to the actual Flare itself. And as I hover over the different elements, you'll see one right here, the caustic, is that if I hover over it, it's actually going to highlight it for me as well as the circle the circles themselves, the discs. Now, the discs are a little bit hard to see because they're actually living up here. But it actually gives you a very good idea of what's going on with this flare. So, for example, if I wanted to see just the circles themselves, I could solo them like such. Okay. What I could also do is just turn them off in this flare. I'm going to get down and actually turn the caustic off as well in that little circle. Uh, because basically what I want to do is just see what this is going to look like without all that. Now... What we're going to do here is I'm going to get this back to a, a happy starting point. So let's actually come in and let's delete the caustic, delete the circle, and delete the circles. All right. Now you'll notice that there is one more disc in there down here that I do want to get rid of. And I just want to have this flare look a little bit like the sun. Now we're going to add some other parameters in here as well. Now keep in mind, this element is a little bit on the big side. So what I might want to do is just come in and make some adjustments to it here. Let's grab the hotspot. Let's adjust its total scale as well. I think that's okay. And what I want to do now is I want to get in and add some fan rays. Okay, so I'm going to take fan rays. I'm just going to drag them over here and drop them like such. And I'm now going to make sure that their color matches the outer color of the hotspot. You'll see it's this sort of orange color right here. Uh, let's just put this over here just so that we can grab it very easily. So let's come back to fan rays. I'm just going to come into its color. I'm going to select that here. I'm going to say OK. And this is already looking much better. All right. You can see if I disable that. OK. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that flare is going to live up here. And I want to more or less see the little beams that are sticking out. Now, again, we could adjust the disk size. Maybe I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more here. Let's just put it down at like, I don't know, 32. I think that's a lot better. OK. And one last thing for the hotspot. We're just going to bring its total scale down a little bit too, kind of to about there. Perfect. Because I want it to blend in right here. And there's one other thing that I am going to do. And I'm going to add... A chroma ring. Let's take chroma ring. I'm just going to drag it in there. Now, the chroma ring is really impeding on her. So what we're going to do is just scale it out a bit. And what I'm also going to do once I've scaled it out is I'm just going to adjust its brightness. We're just going to bring it down to about 20. I think that's a little bit better. I think the scale is actually a little bit too big. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now you can see that it is dynamic and it does adjust as the flare moves across the screen. But this is now how we get in and create a subtle flare that will work very well with this shot. So all I'm now going to do is I'm going to say apply. Now I could jump back into Media Composer at this point and say, woohoo, I'm done. But what I want to do is I want to get in and save this sun as a preset. 
All right now how are we going to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up here to where it says lens flare right over here to the right to where it says create custom preset and what I always like to do is I like to give these the name of what they are now this is probably like about the 20th Sun I've created so I'm just gonna call this Sun I'm gonna call it in New York City and we're just gonna call it uh, beams I'll say with beams and chroma all right now most importantly what I want to do is get in and add some tags so we're gonna tag Sun I'm gonna tag New York City I'm gonna tag uh, let's tag let's edit let's tag beams and let's tag chroma all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply going to say okay now you'll notice over on the left the presets have updated so what exactly has happened well let me show you remember I told you that when I got in and I started creating all these effects I'd created all the flares and I created one right after the other well what I was also doing at the time was I was saving presets as I went so if I navigate up here to presets and I click in the search window and I type in Sun you can see where that Sun that I created for the satellite flying through the shot where the alien lens flare is where the lens flare is for the projector uh, you'll see that I've gotten in and created presets for all of these including our Sun in New York City with beams and chroma now what I also did was I tagged let's edit in those presets as well so you'll see I can tag let's edit or type in let's edit so this way anytime I'm creating a let's edit tutorial I can get in and find those easily what I like to do as well is anytime I add a tag I add a tag of the project that I'm working on because I'm always gonna have a producer that says hey Kev remember that project you did in New York City you know, remember that 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 awesome flare you created for that New York City project can you call that up again quickly and I can simply instead of having to go and search for it in the project I can just type in New York City and guess what that presets gonna come up right away ready for me to work with well now all I have to do is simply say apply that flare is there ready to go very subtle I could get in and add some keyframes to it if I wanted to just to make it be a little bit more realistic but basically this is a very subtle flare that we got some beams coming out here we've got a little bit of a chroma hoop or a chroma fan coming out here and it's looking very nice now let's take the concept of what I talked about earlier and let's push it to the next level with our UFO shot all right all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the flare and I'm gonna drag it and drop it onto the UFO now as you can see it looks very different okay but that's okay we're gonna get in and adjust it let's come back to the FX editor let's come back to the edit flare so we get to the flare editor and let's just drag this down a little bit now I know I'm not going to use the chroma ring and I know I'm not going to use the fan all right so let's now take our disk that is definitely not the right color and I'm just going to come in and we're going to make it blue baby blue all right and with our hotspot we're going to do the same thing for its outer color baby blue all right so this is already looking better now what we also want to do with our hotspot is adjust its aspect because I want to stretch it right out and let's just bring it scale down a little bit and its brightness way down too okay because now what we've basically done is created a hotspot that will sit over top of the UFO like such and now we can get in and we can start adding other elements for example if I wanted to add a star in here now the star is a little bit much and you'll see that we can get in now and adjust its aspect like that we can adjust the scale just so it's a little bit now this is not going to be exactly the same as the one that I created earlier but you kind of get where I'm going with this let's add blue in there like that very nice and maybe we'll just add some radial streaks in here too now that's a lot now aspect is one that I always like because it's really gonna give it sort of that next level look and as long as we're making everything the same color they all blend in very well together you can see already this is looking really really cool now at the end of the day what I might even do just at the very end is just add a chroma band in there and you can see this is already a very different looking flare than what it originally looked like I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna say apply there we go looking very cool what I'm also going to do again much like we did before is I'm gonna call this Sun for UFO shot and I'm gonna call this and I should actually call it Sun flare in blue for UFO and of course we're gonna tag Sun I'm gonna tag blue Sun I'm gonna tag let's edit and that's probably good enough and I'm just gonna say okay because if I navigate to my all drop down 
and I come down to the custom parameters, you'll see there's what the original one looked like, and here's what the new one that is that I created. And you can see that even though they're very different, they're still both very subtle. Okay? And what I can now do is simply come down and say apply. Now, I want to point something else out here before I wrap things up, which is something that I did with the original that I haven't really shown you yet. And that is, I'm just going to navigate over here to my effects editor because I want to show you guys that there are a bunch of cool parameters in here for you to work with to take things to the next level. For example, the one thing that I did in here that really enhanced this flare was I added some flicker right here. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this effect because I want to have the animation of it. And I'm just going to show you this here. You can see there's the flare. Now you can see as soon as the UFO takes a dip and let's actually just, we'll animate that just so that you can sort of see what's going to happen with it here. Okay. Bring it down to here like such. Very nice. Okay. So you can see flares looking good. Takes a dip with the UFO. Obviously we're not being exactly perfect here. But what I want to now have is to get in and have that flare flicker. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to step in here. Let's come down to the flicker parameters. I'm just going to delete that keyframe because I don't really care about adding a keyframe for it. And let's add an amount of flicker here. Okay, maybe we'll put the speed at about 200. Okay, now you can see already as soon as I did that, it immediately updated it and it immediately impacted the flare. And you can see it now flickering as it comes down. And I could probably even get in and just play this in pretty close to real time. There we go. And you could see again, something that's so subtle, like getting in and adding this flare, really has taken this shot and just improved on it. It was already very cool, but we've improved on it even more to take this shot to the next level. And like I said, I jokingly said it at the beginning, but as you can now start to see, every shot that you have, like these very cool outdoor shots, can easily be enhanced and taken to the next level by simply adding a lens flare. And let me tell you something, the flares that you now have access to inside of BCC Plus's lens flare effect by getting in and using the flare designer can be super enhanced, super detailed, and you can create them super quick and super simple with a few clicks of the mouse. All right, now don't forget, if you subscribe to Continuum, and you don't see the BCC Plus effects inside the effects palette, make sure you download the update that's included in your subscription. And for more free training, you can head on over and check us out on the Boris FX YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.